This presentation is a test framework I've written and am releasing to the community. It's called QSpec, and this presentation is Spec Testing in Q, or Some Tests You're Better Off Not Doing Manually. So, of course, there are a whole host of reasons to write tests for your code. The only one that ultimately matters is time. Time spent ensuring code is correct. Time spent fixing production problems. Time spent enhancing old code. Tests save you time. Everything else is an argument in support of this because time is the only resource that you can't get more of. Alright then, we're going to write tests. What are the current testing frameworks for Q? There's Simon's K4 unit, which is pretty good, and for our needs we needed a few more features. And then there's, well, um, unless I've been traveling in the wrong Q circles, nothing else. So the difference between your regular X unit style test and a specification test is the language used. I would characterize it thusly. X unit tests say what you are testing. Spec tests say what you should be testing. This difference is subtle, so let's keep this in mind when we're going through the examples. What should we be testing? The words that specification testing, or as it is sometimes known as, behavior driven development use, tend to be declarative. The four words shown here happen to be the major keywords that we'll use with the test framework. Desk is the keyword we'll use for the context of one set of tests. It doesn't have to describe anything in particular, but a single collection of functionality or behavior fits well within one description. Should and holds are the two keywords that will encapsulate the tests that are actually performed. In spec testing parlance, these are expectations. Must is basically the assert method that we will use, but I think you'll see that it reads a little better. In the following examples, I'm going to show some code from the test for a logging utility, and also try to show the various keywords in action. These are actual tests that have been selected out of the full test code. Okay, so overall, here we have a description. The first line tells us what is being described. The next two statements are the expectations, as I mentioned. We read these aloud as they are presented. Logging messages should handle empty lists. The third statement is a fuzz expectation. It is read aloud, for logging messages, it holds that it can display lists of random objects. What makes a fuzz expectation different is that it's run a bunch of times and the code block is given random input from a generator. You can see the generator there in the second argument, but there are also a number of default generators for each data type to save some time. Also, we see a number of must statements. In this example, we're demonstrating a couple of the simple behaviors that the logging facility should exhibit. Namely, that it can handle logging an empty list without error, that the way a character list is handled is that it is simply enlisted for printing, and that basically any general list should work fine. I decided to use a fuzz test for the last part because it's a bit easier than trying to come up with a bunch of random general lists that might break the function myself. Now, let's take a look at a few more of those must statements. Here, we're looking at a number of different musts which, as I mentioned earlier, are the assertions. Basically, anything that produces a Boolean or a Boolean vector can be used since they are all implemented in terms of one base must function. You might have noticed that all of these looks like they should work, except the last one. 200 most certainly is not within 10 and 20. So if one of these assertions fails, then your test will fail, and you'll see a message telling you about the values that failed. There are also a couple of helper functions added in. Before and after makes setup and teardown easier. Alt allows for different setup and teardown contexts. Mock lets us swap variables and functions out easily. And Fixture makes it simple to prepare and use a test data set within individual tests. So the mock statement is actually just a convenient way of changing the state of any global variable in the program. It fully respects the backslash d context that the test was defined in and will create a variable if one does not exist. What I'd like to impress upon you is that anything that is placed into the runtime system through the use of the mock function will be returned to its normal state after the test is finished. This means we can reach into the guts of a program and tweak something without having to worry about what that will do in another part of our tests. In this example, I'm attempting to make sure that the guard that determines whether or not the logging function actually logs is working right. So I go through a couple of iterations, changing the log level and seeing if the log message gets through to the output handle and triggers an error. Okay, now we come to the last three elements. Before blocks are pretty simple. They take a function that has no arguments and execute the code contained within before every expectation. 
In this example, we're using the before blocks to mock out the handle that is used and to load fixtures. You might notice that there are two before blocks. I'll come to how that works in a moment. A fixture is a way of getting test data into queue without having to have mocks and literals clutter up your before and after functions. A fixture can be of three different types, a queue file object, a directory that queue can load like any partition directory, or a specially formatted separated value file which will be loaded in as a table. By default, the variable the fixture is named for is the file it is loaded from, although it does not have to be. This is honestly one of the things about QSpec that I am most pleased with. A lot of the time that I find myself spending while doing ad hoc testing is keeping track of the data that is driving my tests. With the, fixture time, with the fixture system, it is remarkably easy to have test data live with the test itself. So I mentioned earlier that there were two before blocks. An alt block is a simple way of saying that one or more expectations use a different before or after function than other blocks without affecting the rest of the expectations. What this means here is that fixtures will only be loaded for the should expectation contained in the alt block. If you tried to refer to them in the last expectation, an error would occur. This example might need a little more explanation what with the alt block. So, notice that the first before block simply mocks out the handle to be used with an identity function as seen in previous examples. Next, an alt block is used to set up a different before function that loads some table fixtures in. In the actual test file, there are a number of other expectations used, so it makes, sense, makes a lot of sense to have an alternate setup method. In the actual expectations, we first ensure that the logging facility can display tables, and then that it also can display dictionaries. Okay, so a few quick things before wrapping up. First, the framework has been tested in itself. Second, uh, there was one thing I made a point of earlier, and that was that if you use the mock function when modifying global variables, your program state will be on, left unaffected by running the tests. Since the fixtures use the same code to load themselves in and out, this should make it possible to run tests on a system in production to do health, te health checks. All the keywords that have been added are capable of being used only when a test is running. Uh, also, it should be cross-platform, as I haven't used native system calls anywhere, although it hasn't been thoroughly tested on Windows. So I'd appreciate anyone who would like to do that. Also, I am accepting patches, so if you have some functionality you'd like to add, send them in. Uh, please write tests if you could. Uh, that would be very nice. Um, uh, finally, I don't want you to feel obligated to have to contribute back, so it's all licensed under uh, free BSD slash MIT license, uh, so there are no GPL concerns. Uh, there are some things I'm thinking about doing in the future, which uh, could include some per sort of performance testing, though if I do, I'd like to provide microsecond timing resolution. And I'm also interested in some sort of web-based output, but whether or not that ends up being worth the effort for just possibly some pretty eye candy isn't immediately clear, so I'm going to be waiting for feedback. And finally, here's uh, the project info. The two, repos two links at the top are the repository for the testing library itself and a subsidiary library that uh, the testing library needs, though I have included some instructions on how to replace that if you don't want to use it. And on the bottom there are uh, links to resources about behavior-driven development and spec testing. And um, my email is in the top there. So thank you for listening.